Today, we're talking about job design and Yoshipi's specific comments with regards to job design. He gave a lot of exclusive interviews during the Dontrail Media Tour that I was part of, but I finally have time to catch up on all of them. Now, one of the most interesting ones was given to an Italian media outlet called Multiplayer.it. And obviously, I can read Italian, but you can use Google Translate and you can get a very good gist of what he is saying. Essentially, there's been a lot of complaints about how job design is, the dumping down of jobs that is the common player's complaint and how people don't like the two-minute meta and Yoshipi is responding to their feedback. Alongside that, this is a very relevant topic because coming off the media tour, I think as people kind of realize their tooltips are being changed, and in the case of black mages, I'm sure you probably might have seen or hear some chatter about some black mage mains on the JP forum saying that this is not a change in the new Don Trail kind of play style that they really like. And I think Yoshipi's media interview here is really important. So kind of let me talk through some of the main points that we need to know here. And the most important part is with regards to this more difficult question that he was asked. And he said in the past, and he's talked about it, they have redirected their development efforts towards reducing player stress. And as a result, they made certain decisions. One of the thing was the growing sizes of boss target circles, increasing the distance from which you could attack them. And a lot of people then said this kind of became too easy. And Yoshipi said this was kind of a knee-jerk reaction. Like they hear some discourse and then they immediately reacted to it as a knee-jerk reaction thing. And he said he's now convinced that this is kind of the wrong approach. And he's thinking more about the degree of satisfaction when players complete the challenge. And he said there's something that's already in the works for Dawn Trail. So I think once we get the first Savage Raid here, we probably have a good assessment of you know what he's talking about. But more importantly, I think jobs. This is something that a lot of us are very concerned about. You see, a lot has been said about job homogenization. And you should be safe. They intend for jobs to shine their own ways so that you have a pride in playing a certain job. And it's clear from his narrative here that he is hearing the discourse and we'll talk about the discourse, my take, and the common consensus around that. But before that, he also said he doesn't think it's a good thing to make all job rotations extremely similar. And this is the kicker, right? He says, we chose to align the buff windows with a window lasting 120 seconds because otherwise it would be impossible to align the rotation of different jobs. But even in this case, the result was to make the job rotations extremely similar and I don't think that's a good thing. However, it doesn't seem like we will get immediate changes because he said, so why not act now? The battle content and the job mechanics are strongly interconnected. So we set ourselves the challenge of refining the battle content and the battle mechanics first before dedicating ourselves to the jobs. So it sounds like in 7.0, their core focus is on rate design. They think that rate designs have become too stale. They keep using the same mechanics that has kind of become a routine for people. And whenever they had more novel mechanics that people didn't like, they just threw it out of the window, which he thinks that's not the right approach. And he says after tackling all the rate designs, then they'll tackle job design. So it really sounds like the job revisiting reworks might be something coming down the line, but we'll get immediate improvements based off the rates. And here's where I want to take a pause on the article and just talk about the entire job homogenization stuff, Yoshi pieces, comments and stuff like that. Make no mistake about it, we play MMORPGs, we play a class, we play a job really because the identity of relating to a certain job or class is important to us. It's really an expression of self and that's why we play MMOs, right? We want to live in a virtual world, want to express ourselves in a way that we can't express in real life. And homogenization of jobs naturally leads to playstyles being eroded as jobs start losing what makes them unique and what makes them special. A good example is the slow removal of positionals. So removal of positionals naturally starts raising the question of is this game becoming too easy? And they're dumbing down the melee jobs, making them less desirable. However, there's always a counter argument and Yoshibi said this in a few media tour interviews. He said, look, it's very hard to make everyone happy, right? You can steer too far to the right or steer too far to the left in terms of how you're making adjustments and there will always be dissenting voices. It's just part and parcel of having a large community. Because the converse could be true, which is by dumbing down the need for positionals, then more people are willing to try to play the melee jobs more engagement. The keyword here is balance because when you remove intricacies like that, you're lowering the skill ceiling and you're making gameplay a bit more autopilot. But at the same time, you're able to draw in a new crowd of audience who feel like, okay, Final Fantasy 14, I can get into it. It's not too difficult. You know, one of the very good points that I think was brought up during the Don Trail Media Tour was just how well the game has been doing. They are at all time subscriber high. And by the way, if you don't believe those public PR statements, you can go and pull up Square Enix's financial reports every single year. And they have the MMO division earnings. And Endwalkers during the very last patch, 
during this lull, the subscriber numbers in terms of revenues is still higher than Shadowbringer launch year, which is a crazy stat. So I think a lot of the dissenting voices that we hear online on social media, on YouTube, people ranting about jobs. You know what? I feel like that could be the vocal minority because the people, the main people who play Final Fantasy XIV, what they do is they have a hard days at work, they go home, they just want to turn on their PlayStation or their PC and they just want to log in and mash buttons and they feel that's fun. They feel that's engaging and that's what they need. But the people that we see complaining about all these jobs, they might be really the vocal minority. I'm not saying that their voices are not important, their voices are equally important and that's what Yoshi P is trying to say. He's trying to say there must be a balance and they are currently revisiting the balance. But I guess my point is, knowing that they have the data on the back end of how users are being engaged in terms of playing this game, I don't think they are purposely making jobs easier for no particular reason. There must be a reason underlying this. And it seems from their earnings and their results, they seem to be going somewhere. And look, Yoshi P does agree with the dissenting voices. He has basically said in the article that job identity is important, and they realize that. So while extreme complexity when it comes to jobs isn't necessary because it's not welcoming to new players, jobs shouldn't be pared down to the point of feeling too generic either. And while pruning button bloat is generally good, it shouldn't be at the cost of fun or engaging mechanics. And I think that's what we're going to see going forward towards the later half of Dawn Trail, going into the next expansion after Dawn Trail. Because this is an eternal debate. Where do you draw the line? How can jobs be distinct and rewarding, yet at the same time not too complex that beginners will be turned off by the complexity? Another point of view to consider is that as they continue to add jobs at every expansion, eventually it will come to a point where it gets harder and harder to balance all these jobs relative to one another because with every expansion the number of jobs increase and jobs don't exist in a vacuum they exist in relativity to one another and the idea of having too much complex mechanics will actually make balancing even harder to do so there's a lot of moving parts the last thing that I thought was really interesting is what Yoshipi said at the producer live letter. He said that they need to pare down the number of actions really because eventually you start running out of binds on the controller and they want to make 14 controller friendly going into the future and this is not something they are budging on. And I can tell you this is something that is important because at the media tour that I was at, they literally had a keyboard and mouse set up beside a controller for you to use if you want to. They have everything set up and it's clear that they don't want to isolate the controller players. The point of this video is this. Yoshipi hears the dissenting voices. He's not disregarding the dissenting voices. He's basically saying that in terms of priority, they will fix the stale battle design, the raid design first, and then they will tackle the job design the homogenization problems because there's two things and they do interact with one another, right? Because how fast you clear a raid, how easy the raid is to clear is also dependent on how powerful the jobs currently are. And if you tweak both variables at the same time, then it becomes hard to control. So he's saying keep one constant, fix the other thing first. Then once the other thing is stable and fixed, which is raid design, then they can look at job design. But as a 14 player, I'm just glad that they are listening. They probably see a lot of the voices around how the new jobs play when it comes to Dawn Trail after the media tour. And for jobs like Black Mage, where there's a lot of kind of dissenting voices, it's Yoshi Pisa's main job. I'm sure he probably reads the Japanese forums himself. So it'll be interesting to see how they react based off that. We have another producer live letter coming up at the end of this week. I wonder if he'll address any of those comments with regards to job design. Now, I've spoken a lot about job design. I also want to highlight another interview he did with Hardcore Gamer, where he also spoke specifically about the rate design. And he is explicit. He says that for higher end rate, where you go in with an eight person party, including savage content, to be quite frank, I feel it's starting to look familiar. We're seeing more and more similarities between the different mechanics that are implemented in a fight. And he says a big chunk of this, and he also mentioned this to the Italian media outlet, that back in Stormblood, they pivoted to accommodating and trying to lessen the stress on players. Whenever they hear some complaints about certain mechanics, they just avoid that and remove that. And because of that, he's saying it leads to extremely large target circles or some of the content that might have less unique battle mechanics. He says he feels his developers have become more hesitant on incorporating unique mechanics and they got a bit too sensitive to non-favorable feedback that it restricts their creativity. And I think it's amazing that he has the honesty to be able to say this to a media outlet, to be able to recognize that, hey, my team is not doing as well as I want them to and this is something I'm aware of. And he says it's okay to make mistakes, but they want to bring back the wow factor in raids to players. They want people to be surprised, to be astonished, to really love what they're doing. And they want to bring the unique element back and that's the goal he has set for his developers to achieve throughout Dawn Trail. 
And this puts into context what I said earlier, job staff on hold, not as important, maybe some small changes, but fix the rate first, make the rate more interesting. Now, since we we're on this article, something interesting he mentioned as well. He said basically they have done two types of field operations before, right? Bosja and Eureka. And we already know field operations are coming back for Dontrail. And it seems like he has this expectation that Dontrail's field operation will be the best of both worlds. And why is that so? He said when they did Eureka, it was their first field operation. They didn't have the proper knowledge to apply appropriate support systems. And with Bosja on the flip side, we try to accommodate and make sure we're supporting our pain points within the system. And that's why maybe both content tended to skew on the extreme side. And it kind of parallels what we discussed so far in this video, right? That people complain about rate mechanics and then Yoshi P and team goes to the other extreme and say, all right, we are removing those mechanics then. And then now it becomes kind of lopsided in terms of how the game feels. And he goes on to say that in Eureka, once they had Baldicion Arsenal ready and available, that's when it started to get exciting for a lot of people. But until then, there wasn't a lot to do. And he said with that learning, we are looking to have something available every patch. And then, with the learnings we had from Bostia, we would have systems available to support and provide to do those things. TLDR, we are seeing the learnings from both content and trying to reflect both elements, merging it into the brand new content in Dontrail for the field operations. But reflecting on everything we discussed so far in this video, and also what he said to me during my exclusive interview with him at the media tour, he talked a bit about how it's tough. It's tough to kind of steer the car left and right at the same time. There's a balance he needs to strike as a producer. And they're in the midst of striking the balance. It's clear he's aware of those problems. And he has also mentioned in the media tour that maybe sometimes they have overcompensated too much and now is a period of adjustment. So it's an interesting time for Final Fantasy XIV. But if you read all the optics and all the narratives around the media tour, it's also clear that Yoshi P's game is on the long term. He has said repeatedly, and you can Google this, there's a few media articles on this, that he isn't focused on subscriber count alone. He's focused on the long term growth because if he does this knee jerk reaction thing, where they have a bad quarter and suddenly he's like, oh shit, what have we done wrong? That will probably result in some decisions that are suboptimal for long-term growth. So yeah, beyond all the beautiful graphical overhauls and whatnot, I think this is a very important part of Final Fantasy XIV in the future ahead. So I'm eager to see what he has in store. That's it. Thanks for watching this video. If you like the content, subscribe to the channel. More Dontrio coverage coming your way. A big shout out to every single Patreon subscriber on screen. Thanks for making my content even possible. If you'd like to support us, link to Patreon is in the description. Take care. I'll see you in the next Dontrio coverage video.